This time we're looking at the legendary M1 and this was launched in 1988 and um, it's actually up until recently was the best selling synth of all time but as we heard earlier it's been knocked off its perch by the microcorg but um, it's just an amazing product I'm so excited to be talking about this um, when it launched um, it was only £1,499 as well so hmm. that was a great Incredible. price to be honest for what you, you got and and also when I was doing my research I found out this was the only product that Korg learnt, launched that year Wow! so they launched one product and it was the M1 it smashed it, it smashed absolutely everything. smashed it Yeah, that's a kind there of a drop go. the mic moment <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? like, yeah. drop the M1 boom yeah. <laughs> tell your friends about and then just like Lovely. walk off yeah exactly <laughs> so um, so the previous year in 87 Roland had launched the D50 which is a great synth in its own right um, that's actually the second uh, the third best selling synth of all time behind the Michael and the M1 and um, and it was kind of similar in its ethos in that it had a digital uh, kind of waveform aspect to it but because the M1 was a workstation that's what really caught people's imagination it was the first the world's first workstation um, ATA also saw the Akai S1000 and MPC60 wow mm -hmm. so for them that was an absolutely mega year as well um, there was also the Roland MC500 Mark II which is a a MIDI sequencer, a hardware MIDI sequencer, which at that time was really, really popular, and also Yamaha came with the DX11 as well. Um, so it's just first of all, it's amazing that the uh, the M1 was the world's first w first workstation and also the best-selling synth at the time. It outsold the D uh, Yamaha DX7 and the Roland D50. Um, it was produced for seven years due to its popularity. So. Um, it used a sample and synthesis technique. It was actually derived from the DW8000, which we covered last time, and the DSS1. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I included it last time, because it was actually a very important product on the journey of Korg to get to the M1. Um, and it introduced this synthesis called AI, which is Advanced Integrated Synthesis. Completely digital. Um, there was one or two digital oscillators per patch, with a maximum of up to 16 notes of polyphony, which at the time was a lot. Um, fully digital signal flow, so we went away from the analog circuitry and went purely digital with the M1. Had 61 keys, and it had kind of minimal controllers. We stripped it right back on the panel. It had a 40 by 2 LCD display with keys beneath and a data slider, kind of similar to a lot of the synths which were around at that time. Uh, numerical data entry buttons and a four-way joystick, and no arpeggiator, funnily enough, in wow. there. Yeah, which is mm. interesting. Uh, the internal ROM, so that's where the in the memory of the sounds was held. That was four megabytes, which by today's standards sounds tiny, but at the time it was actually massive. Mm. Most desktop PCs had around 512 kilobytes, so to have a keyboard with wow. four megabytes in there, um, and that included 149 multi samples, and it had a great mix of like acoustic instruments, DWGS waves, um, which we talked about earlier. Um, drum kits, ethnic sounds, exotic sounds, so it's a really good mix and some quite interesting new sounds for people to explore. It also had two effects blocks in there with reverb, delay, overdrive, EQ, chorus, flanger, rotary speaker, phase shifter and frequency exciter. So from an effects point of view, again for that time, very powerful. Another thing which was brand new and very powerful was the combi mode of course. So you had your program mode where you did all your sound programming, but you could then layer up to eight sounds in combi mode and these could be played simultaneously, split, layered, velocity switched. And this was really the first time anyone had ever seen anything like this. So you can imagine how kind of groundbreaking that was. Mm. Plus there was a sequencer built in, which again was new. So an eight track sequencer um, with full track editing, quantize, 10 song memory, 100 pattern memory. So and there were 100 user programs and combis. Um, these could be backed up onto data cards. MCR 02, 03 and 04, 128 kilobytes, 256 and 1 megabytes, 1 megabyte um, capacity, or you could just dump it via MIDI SysX. Um, there was actually two card slots on there. One was for sample ROMs and one for patches, combos and sequences. And there was many, many voice cards were made, both by Korg and third party companies. Uh, the product spawned a whole market of add-ons, including manual sounds, 
training videos, hardware modifications even. And there, at one time, there were more than 50 official third-party partners working with Korg manufacturing products for the M1. So it was absolutely massive. Um, we'll come back to some of the specs in a minute, but I just want to actually play some sounds for you because more than any other synth possibly alongside the DX7 in history, I think the M1 has an iconic sound and it's been used on so many oh, records. Yeah. This is where um, I'm going to get excited. There might yeah. be lots of squeals now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what I've done is I've, I've actually loaded into my Chrome the M1 expansion pack, which includes all the original samples from the Korg. Amazing. M1, and I've got some sound examples for you. So, just talk about the sounds first of all. So, the first sound you you got when you first turned on the M1 was this universe sound, which sounded like this. So it's like a mix sound. of a choir and that kind of. It's like the rain, the rain drop thing. Though, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Really Really reminds me. It just reminds me of playing my Amiga. Yeah, it's got a bit <laughs> about yeah. it. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. But oh, it's just what a sound that is. And we, we had an M1 um, back um, in my school days, and I couldn't tell you what well, it was going to be after the year it was released. Obviously, but I couldn't tell you which school. But I remember playing one and that feeling of oh, something. This is different. This is. Yeah. I want to want to be more creative with that. Just yeah. Just imagine th going back to that time sticking some headphones into an M1 and playing that sound and how different mm. it would have sounded back then. Oh. And uh, it's just inspiring. Um, so there were, that was one of the iconic sounds. That was actually the opening of um, one of Queen's songs, Don't Try So Hard, off the yeah. album. In your end, I've actually got my original Look at this. Book with music. I've got the original score from In Endo here, okay. their album. Um, and the reason I bought this is because this has got M1 all over it, this album. Yeah. Queen and In Endo. Pretty much every song has got some M1 on it. Um, so that, as I said, was the universe sound from Don't Try So Hard, but you've also got other sounds on there, which we'll come to in a minute on that same album. Um, so probably the most famous of all sounds uh, is the M1 piano. Mm. So this is a very famous song that was used on. <laughs> Recognise that? So I do. So as we all know, it probably sounds nothing like a piano, but that's its charm because it's a whole new sound in its own it's right. It's the M1 piano. I tell exactly. you what, yeah. I'm yeah. sure Andy will agree as well, is when you're you know, working in a music shop and you've got your guitar players that learn you know, all the different guitar licks to sell guitars, yeah. you always have to learn an M1 demo. <laughs> yeah. You have to learn yeah. an M1 yeah. song. Yeah. You know, and yeah, very you true. know, for the piano and for the organ and for yeah. the... It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's how iconic it is. Yeah. You know? So you've got this kind of thing as well. And the, this expansion pack is so authentic. I've been ABing it against different versions of M1s, and it's just absolutely it sounds fantastic, spot on. doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's spot on. It's making me want to put my shell suit back on. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, back on. Another piano one. <laughs> See, that was my demo. Yeah. <laughs> In a black box. So, yeah, and it's actually quite difficult to play because you have to be so accurate. Yeah. No Do you know what? The, the funny thing is, because it would have all been sequenced on there. Yeah, you? that's you right. Can, you, you, when you hear the tracks now, you can hear the sequencer. You can. literally can hear the sequencer. It's yeah. amazing. Um, and of course, the other very famous sound on the M1 was the organ. So you got stuff like. I'm really um, looking forward to this bit. <laughs> it's just yes. the best sound ever, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm turning the lights off. It's happening. <laughs> just waiting for the drum to kick in. Um, stuff like this. Um, how's it going now? Yes. Yeah. That sort of stuff. And this, of course. It's such an iconic sound. It really is it? so it simple, it, yeah. but so and, so. And now, I mean, moving on now to what we're now, 2017. There are there. Are, there's kind of a bit of a house revival, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. Big so, time. Big so time. many. You hear that sound now. You're still hearing it, and the yeah. piano and everything. People are dancing, shuffling the trainers in a nightclub, <laughs> listening yeah. to house music on roller skates. No, yeah, it's just, like going back to 1988. <laughs> and then you've got stuff like this where they combine sounds. So you've got the organ sound plus a nice pad in the background for some strings. <laughs> 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 Mm. 
I thought you were going to sing. I was going to sing. I was going to throw my hands up. High school youth club. Yeah. <laughs> Just amazing. It is wicked. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, so moving on through some other sounds. Another Queen, very famous sound. Factory preset. <laughs> I just love the fact they just got an M1 and said, "Okay, let's plug it in and we'll just record that." Yeah. They didn't do change anything. All it, presets. <laughs> it's, brilliant, <laughs> it's, actually, it? it's amazing. <laughs> There is one thing on that album which is the show must go on, which is a sort of string sound. Yeah. yeah. Which people say, oh, it's a preset off the M1. It isn't actually because I went through all the presets and it's not. But it is. They've slightly tweaked some of the parameters on one yeah. of the combis. So, again, that's um, very close. That was probably um, an accident. Probably an accident. Just yes. Knocked a fader. Oh, yeah. I've changed cut off. Oh yeah. Let's Save. use that. Yeah. So um, slap bass as well. So um, this is very big in the states. Seinfeld. Seinfeld theme. Mm -hmm. See how it goes. <laughs> Again, back to preset. All M1 sounds, just <laughs> unbelievable. Um, yeah, so obviously sometimes they would combine sounds together. So here we've got like an octave piano. So just doing something simple like that, like lowering two pianos. Adam's really <laughs> dancing now. It's it's like dance. Dance. Happy yeah. Mondays, yeah. Um, and then, for me, this is one of the ultimate M1 tracks because it combines... Be, this is going to be my organ demo. <laughs> I know it is, I can see it coming. Well, because what I just listened to the song and I thought it was organ, but it was. But what they did was they got an organ and then they got put the M1 piano on top of it later. <laughs> so it's like, it's like both iconic sounds in one song. So you've got... Yes. Um, <laughs> so you've got that, but then they start the piano. Um, Can't tell you how difficult it is not to start making the drum noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Oh. <laughs> Great big button. <laughs> So you can combine it all together like that. Um, another com combination of sounds they use, this one. <laughs> Do we know it? Love it. <laughs> Time anyway, to get the baggy jeans on again. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's what's needed. I feel like I'm going like reliving my childhood here. This yeah. is like Christmas Carol, but with the M1. <laughs> You're on a journey, yeah. Um, so, as you can hear, that's just literally scratching the surface. So many iconic tracks, mm. um, and some massive songs. I mean, like Vogue by Madonna and yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Box, right on top. They're just massive hits. Um, so, also we found out it had been used a lot in video game music as well. Yeah, um, as uh, Adam knows yes. very well. So uh, it was used on um, what's the name of the guy David Whittaker. David Whittaker. Yeah, he's a he was a legend. Film, yeah, legend in the, in terms of film composition back in the day, and he did a lot of Amiga soundtracks and other stuff. See, I, I knew of him because he's from Bury or Bury, ah, depending so, on what you what you pronounce it as. So near Scotland, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he used to write um, soundtracks for you know Commodore sixty four for the Amiga for Spectrum but it obviously wrote one of my favourite um, soundtracks Shadow of the Beast yes he did music for Speedball oh, yeah. Yeah. fantastic um, but Ice he also cream. did um, he subtune 21 of Lazy Jones was the the main lick in Zombie Na by Zombie Nation yes oh. yeah wow that, he that was okay wow so that's how I kind of know him but from Shadow of the Beast and that yeah and obviously, you know, M1. Yeah. So. so what I've got here is a little sequence I've made of the Shadow of the Beast. <laughs> just, uh, Adam's just gone into meltdown. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> no, just but, no, but the dribble. <laughs> thing you think about it, though, of the time, the soundtrack, when you hear this now, 
from work from 1988 computer game soundtracks. So from jumping from, from 8 bits to, to yeah. this, yeah. playing the game, which was revolutionary in itself because of the art style and because of the way it had like 3D back, like a yeah, 3D, parallax scrolling. That's it? the yeah. one, yeah. yeah. And then uh, this soundtrack, just immense, <laughs> yeah. just immense. Um, so what I've done here is a little sequence um, of the original, but then I've added an effect. I've called it my Amiga emulator, but it's basically a stereo decimator effect <laughs> to make it sound like it's sort of 16-bit sound. There we go. So that's what it would have sounded like. So I'm going to start off clean as it would have sounded on the M1. Amazing. <laughs> it's just you need to do a video on this. I do. I definitely do. So we'll let it play through a little bit. You could just picture him running along the landscape now. Here we go. So now I bring in the effects. There it is. <laughs> and you can really notice it when the snare comes in in a sec. You'll hear it really, that's what the Amiga would have sounded like. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> that's fantastic. It's incredible. Let's bring it back to the M1 again. Bring back those other frequencies. It's like a time travel switch. Yeah, it is. Basically, what what David Whitaker did, he took the M1 and he he sampled um, these little um, sounds into um, some specific software which he wrote apparently mm. um, to kind of convert it into the Amiga format. So that kind of gave it that grainy, edgy quality, mm. which actually adds a lot to the sound as well. So, yeah, thank um, you, David Whitaker. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. So just finishing off then on the M1, um, there was an expanded version. Uh, called the M1 EX, um, and that was available via an upgrade. Uh, it actually doubled the PCM waveform memory to 8 megabytes, which again at that time was just monstrous. Then there was a rack version in 89, that was the M1R, that was a 2U rack version, and funnily enough, it actually included the sequencer on there, which um, nowadays, if there is a rack version of anything of a workstation, mm. you'd never have a yeah, sequencer yeah, on there, yeah. so that's quite good. So it was literally the whole engine in there. Um, there was an RE1 hardware remote editor as well which was uh, available for the M3R, which is a cut-down version. The M3R was a cut-down version, a single oscillator, oscillator, one U rack version, with no sequencer. Um, then it kind of went into hibernation for a bit, but then in 2004, the Legacy Collection version appeared, and it provided all the PCM program and combi data from the original M1 and, e and EX, plus all 19 optional ROM cards, totaling more than 2,700 presets and 256 note polyphony so it's a massive upgrade massive, yeah, and still yeah. available today and brilliant um, it's also completely backwards compatible with the original M1 data um, 2013 saw the M1 M01D which is the Ninten Nintendo 3DS version yes. again partnering with Nintendo mm -hmm. again brilliant 2015 was the IM1 the iPad version which had an updated interface up to 3300 sounds via in-app purchases and integrates nicely with gadget um, the data again backwards compatible with the legacy version and the original M M1 so as far as artists go I mean you could write pages of this yeah, but yeah, I've just picked out some of the mega names um, 808 State, Aerosmith, Depeche Mode, The Orb, The KLF, Gary Newman, Robert Miles, Mike Oldfield, Ray Rick Wankman, Pet Shop Boys, Vangelis, Vince Clark, Thomas Dolby, E17, Greg Fellengaines, Jan Hammer, Bruce Hornsby, Jean-Michel Jarre, Queen, Quincy Jones, John Lord, Madonna, OMD, and Take That. That's, that's just a few. Mega. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> it's like a who's who of the music industry, isn't it? Do you know something else which I think is quite amazing about the M1, which makes it such a huge part of the Korg history? Do you know that it was the sales of the Korg M1 which allowed Korg to buy their, their other half of the business back from Yamaha? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Which is amazing. So is Korg amazing. really became just Korg yeah. with no external influence. That is uh, a nice story as well, isn't it? To round off the, the history really of the M1. Incredible, yeah. that. Mm. So there we go. So there we go. That was the Korg M1. That was amazing, that. Thanks for your, all your efforts for that, Luke. Yeah, right. really, really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. 
Um, so the M1, I think we should do the M1 again next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just more tunes, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the M1 section, because you could go on, couldn't you? You could, you literally could, yeah. Because I, I love the fact that you've got that in the Chrome, so it's, it's that just is nice. so everybody yeah. can go on and get that today. They can, and it's free. <laughs> free, free. Is, it, is it only the Chrome you can get that for, or is it, can you get it for uh, the, the You can only get that for the Chrome, Chrome yeah. Oh, so I can't get it on the Chrome or the Triton? No. Oh, that's so cruel. Oh, well, I need yeah. a Chrome, fine. To be honest, yeah, though, a done. lot of those sounds are in the Triton anyway. I know. Mm. Having yeah. borrowed your try to know. Yes, Christmas, indeed. Thank yeah. you very much. That's it. Um, I found a lot of them in there. So. I'll, um, I'll give it back and you can you can do all the patches for me. That's fine. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Great. So excellent. So that's the the M one.